watercourse agency meeting for Tuesday, October 19th, 7 p.m., a regular meeting. And we have Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Take this off. Uh, <coughs> fire evacuation. If there is a, a problem in the building, we can go out the back door and away from the building. and then, Or you can go out the door, take a left down the stairs and out away from the building. Um, roll call, Jenny. Donna Corbin Zabinski. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Robert <laughs> Hendrickson. Here. Maureen Kisner. Here. Kevin Zorda. Here. So five present. Carrie Howe. Here. Oh, I thought I called you. Okay. Okay. Six. There's six Carrie present. I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we oh, add. Um, oh. I got to add, um, yes. I want a seat, Marie. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, right. thank you. Now. <laughs> All right. I'd like to make a motion that we add correspondence in to uh, after roll call and before public participation. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. So next is our correspondence. We got left off the agenda. <coughs> um, we did receive um, an, an email which I forwarded to the commission here regarding the Felician Sisters inquiry to remind us that we should not be attending any hearings, uh, informal or mm -hmm. public, whatever, that do not sit with this. We only can discuss it here in this room. So we should not be you know, going to anything because it could come before us for as a permit, and that would not be good. Um, the next um, correspondence received, I forwarded to everybody, was the 44th annual meeting for Kakiwak, which is <laughs> <it's> a funny <laughs> name. <laughs> And I do have a question. Um, will the if the town will be paying the fees for that, which is thirty dollars a person? Yep. Who whoever would like to attend on the commissioner side, just send me an email, and they said yes. Okay. And I guess you have to sign up by the fourth yes. to uh, November to get the reduced rate. So we'd have to do that quickly. And it's virtual again this year. And it's virtual. Yeah. And they have a keynote speaker from the NOAA this time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, that's all I had for correspondence. Uh, next on the agenda is public participation. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on items not on the agenda? Again, could you come forward and state your name and address for the record? So this is for items not on the agenda, correct? Okay. Good evening. Hi. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, before I begin, these are personal comments, not associated with any board or agency I'm on. Um, I come before you to thank you for your commitment you've made by volunteering for the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Agency. It is pretty much a thankless job, but someone needs to do it. If you are diligent and take your position seriously, you're a tree hugger, are against development, or something worse in some people's mind. No matter what you do, no matter what, you will be put into some category based on your decisions. If you rule in favor of the developer, they are happy. If you add restrictions to the, their development, now you are edging towards the tree hugger category and, and might be considered anti-development. No matter what, you are given a set of regulations that you and the applicants must follow. A few words regarding your regulations. Section 9 states the Inland Wetlands Agency shall not hold a public hearing on an application unless the Inland Wetlands Agency determines that the proposed activity may have a significant impact on wetlands or watercourses. A petition signed by at least 25 persons who are 18 years of age or older and who reside in the municipality in which the regulated activity is proposed, and so forth and a number of other requirements, the timing issues and regarding the petition and the decision. Much of the remaining undeveloped land in Enfield that is coming before you is impacted by wetlands or watercourses in one form or another, making your job here even more important. I am hoping you please prioritize an initial determination on whether the application will have a significant impact on wetlands or watercourses before not having a public hearing. The significance of a public hearing gives not only the Conservation Commission the ability to provide a statement and provide rebuttal comments, but it also gives concerned citizens or neighbors the right to make comments. 
by having a public hearing, people learn the process, get involved in their town, and realize the commitment made by our volunteer commissioners and agents. You may hear from a neighbor that has lived next to the property for 20 years and on most summer days was able to enjoy his backyard. Now a large building is going to be built. Water flow may change. Detention basins may be required. Now the neighbor has standing water that attracts mosquitoes and he can no longer enjoy his backyard on summer days. Or it may be that he, he or she has enjoyed the deafening sounds of the peepers in the spring. Now gets to hear the sounds of a truck's backup alarm blaring at various times of the day or night. These are quality of life decisions you are making whether you want to believe it or not. The diverted water from a rooftop or pavement must go somewhere as we all witnessed this past year. Roads were closed due to flooding as the wetlands could no longer absorb the excessive water. Our town is responsible for managing storm water and, flood st and flooding streams will continue to occur with the effects of climate change. We will be spending millions of tax dollars to control water flow off of these developed properties. At what point do we determine the runoff going into Freshwater Brook can no longer be managed? Did we overdevelop the watershed along the Scanic? What about Beeman's Brook? Remember the flooding there and the money spent? We cannot keep developing properties that have wetlands. As stated in your regulations, quote, they are an indispensable and irreplaceable but fragile natural resource, end quote. And in another area, it, they say, quote, these regulations hereby provide an orderly process to balance the need for economic growth of the state and the use of its land with the need to protect its environment and ecology in order to forever guarantee to the people of the state the safety of such natural resources for the benefit and enjoyment and for the benefit and enjoyment of generations yet unborn, end quote. Again, thank you for your, for your commitment and please take your time in reviewing any and all applications in front of you. Thank you again. Um, next on the agenda is agent comments. Your mic. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> next on the agenda is uh, agent comments. None. None. Anybody? This way? No. Okay, seeing none, we'll go on. Uh, next is the approval of minutes from October 5th. I move we accept the minutes of, uh, approve the minutes uh, for October 5th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Um, I do see one. I don't think Marie was present. She's not here. Yeah, Marie was absent at that, so that would have to be adjusted. Thank you. Um, do, I, do I have anything else? That was it. That was it, I think. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? So amended. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Donna Corbin Savinsky? Yes. Virginia Higley? Yes. Carrie Ann Howe? Yes. <laughs> Robert Hendrickson? Yes. Kevin Zorda? Yes. Do we get oh, and Murray Pisner, but. Absent. <laughs> Absent. So, five in favor, one abstain. Motion passes. Uh, next, we have the town attorney report, which I don't have. Don't have. Okay. Next on the agenda is our uh, new public hearings, which we have none. Next, number nine is continued public hearings. Uh, let me get my things here organized. Sorry. So. Okay, um, this is for IW 629, 52 South Road, application for a wetland permit for a storage garage and geo grid style gravel road addition. Amy Molina, applicant owner, map 73, lot 94, R44 zone. Um, so to begin, get this. Um, we did have a site visit this past Friday, and uh, most was in, was in attendance. That's nice. I'm trying to find my notes here, sorry. <laughs> Chair? Yeah. Chair, I have a, an updated staff report if you'd like me to read it. Okay, I want to uh, go through that. Uh, we did have the site visit on Friday, October 15th at 5.15. The purpose was to obtain um, the water flow. The water test was performed by the applicant where they used the garden hose, sprayed on the area for about 10 minutes. 
We did an additional test in two other areas for about five or so minutes to observe the flow. During that time, um, the agents came forward and asked me to write down a couple notes for them. So what, some of the things we observed was that the weed fabric was not to the edging of the geo grid, and we thought it, and I'm wondering if it should actually extend past it. Um, uh, well, the, yeah. the okay. um, actually, if you read, uh, is, is there an updated staff report from this one? Yes, it would answer a lot of questions. Okay, okay. Well, well, I'll continue on with okay. what we observed. Yeah. Um, the gravel fill area appears to be recycled material containing concrete and asphalt. There's a slope of the property from the front to back and to the side, and the farmland abuts all the sides. Um, the geo-grid gravel area currently installed is not fully graded. Um, I know that we asked you to stop the build, so you couldn't finish, but um, I believe this does not give us an accurate test on the actual flow. It may be different when it is finished. Mm -hmm. um, the geo-green grid seemed a little flexible, so I'm not you know, we're not sure if it's going to degrade over time when the vehicles go over it and that kind of a thing. Um, is the installation of the geo grid being done professionally or by the homeowners? Um, another observation was the notice of the easement on side of the property. It, the property is on the farmer's side, but there is an easement that runs along the whole side. Uh, we're wondering what if the town could explain what that's for and whatever. Um, Will the driveway geo grid go abut the building? So it goes down straight and then the building is here. So is the geo grid up against the building and on the side is up against the building or is there going to be space? And if there's space, how much space and what's in between it? Um, didn't notice the silt fencing that there is there needs to be adjusted. It was kind of falling down. It probably needs to be extended as well. Um, and during the test, we saw that the water pooled on top. Uh, we're not sure if that'll, I'm sure it will eventually drain through, but if there's a significant rainfall and the whole thing is wet, you know, what will happen then? Is the water gonna spill over the sides or that? Because this is just a you know, small area of it. So if the whole thing's getting wet at the same time and you have all this pooling going on, uh, what will happen with that? So that was some of the cons comments I had heard and people asked me to write down. I don't know if others wanna, Jenny? Before we go any further, I just want to state that I worked in the planning department oh, when, yes. the, Sorry. when the uh, property was subdivided in 2002. If you wish, I'll recuse myself. It doesn't have anything, I feel it doesn't have anything uh, to do with what you're asking for. But if you wish me to recuse myself, I will do that. No? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We just want to make sure that you didn't have a problem with that. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but is, does anybody else, did I miss anything that you observed while we were there? No. To my left or my, or my right? No. That no. Seemed, I hope I gathered it all as we were saying it and seeing it. Okay. Um, so this is a continuation of the hearing. Um, Do we want to hear the updated staff report? Yes. Please. Uh, good evening. Um, my updated staff report is as follows. Um, September 7th application came in originally as discussion for possible agent approval. However, it was found they needed an actual permit due to the location of their proposed garage. September 21st, we received a petition for a public hearing. October 5th, the public hearing was opened and then it was determined that the application did not have enough information about the water impact on the neighboring land. It was also mentioned that their plot plans did not have the right amount of information. A public site visit was planned for Friday, October 15th at 5.15 p.m. to conduct a water test to look for direction of travel and how the, dri uh, how the driveway handles water. Between meetings of October 5th and today, a site plan was done on the original A2 certified site plan that was supplied to the town in 2005 during the original estate owner of Edward Cedar. The property is surrounded by farmland and the, and the top northwestern corner area of the property is within the 100 foot upland review area, according to the survey. It is important to note that the Inland Wetlands Agency only has jurisdiction of that area that is within the upland review area. October 19th, current background. 
This is an application for a wetlands permit for the construction of a 1,500 square foot storage garage for the storing of a boat, jet ski, work van, and work truck. The storage garage will have a gravel bottom with no utilities connected. A site-specific condition should be discussed to compensate for the roof water runoff from the garage by adding a retention basin around the garage. However, the applicant notified staff that a drainage retention plan is already proposed for the garage. The applicants did mention that any gutters would be pointed in towards their property, away from the neighboring property. The gravel road is a geogrid style gravel road with a barrier underneath the gravel to prevent weeds. The barrier is a high grade permeable barrier as described in the product description sheet. Please refer to the product description sheet I printed out for you tonight. On October 15th, a public site inspection was held to test how water runoff is handled by the gravel driveway. The gravel is recycled from Plaza Excavating Company in Enfield. The owner's hose sprayed water in three different locations on the driveway. The first location the hose was on for 10 minutes. Observations could be concluded from this that though the gravel absorbed most water hitting the surface, however, there were minor puddles of water accumulating in areas of the gravel driveway that had not been completed yet. The water continues to flow north down the gravel driveway, but never in the direction of the farmland. The second location was held for three minutes and was about five feet south towards the right away from the first location. This was to determine the water flow direction once again. Observations could be made from this that a majority of the water was absorbed through the gravel and then pulled up in the low areas and then traveled north down the applicant's driveway as seen in the first location observation. The final location was held for about seven minutes and was before the unfinished part of the driveway to see how the weed bearer handles runoff. It appeared that the barrier being used for this driveway is a little thicker than normal barrier and was not permeable enough as water was rather slow to drain. Therefore, staff recommends a site-specific condition to be discussed of having a more permeable barrier between gravel and grass or to remove the barrier from the driveway in the wetlands jurisdiction area completely. Engineering department did comment on the barrier. The proposed death of material for the access driveway with the geogrid observed on site would not require a weed barrier. There are no engineering concerns with the proposed access driveway coming off the existing driveway or the proposed garage. Um, building department had no comments and fire department had no comments and then planning and zoning comments are either remove the barrier from the driveway from the wetlands jurisdiction or replace it for more permeable cloth. A retention basin could be dug around the garage to ensure water runoff protection from the roof. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments yet? No, yet. Can, okay, so the applicants, if they would like to give some updates or? Um, no real updates, I mean, except for updating the site plan and just, um, you know, we did take the neighbor's land in consideration and went above what the restrictions are. Instead of five feet, we're going 10 feet. Instead of the two and a half feet, we're going 10 feet. So we did take that in consideration as well. Um, what you've seen when you guys visited, it's been there for a while. We've already had two flood watches. Nothing happened on the side of the road where pooling happened. So um, I don't see that being a issue in the future either. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Would the, um... Go ahead. So I have two questions. So. Um... On this map that you gave us, uh, I think today, it says 12 feet. Is that at the maximum? Um, because it's not a parallel line. So the 12 feet, is that to the, the farthest point? It's, or to the, the, it's to our fence line. Yeah, but feet. is it the furthest to the... Right, but it's not a parallel line? Yeah, because our property, our property bows out a little bit, but the fence goes straight, so it's 12 feet from the fence. So, so you're actually more than our property line. Okay. All right, and then you uh, you put on here that you're gonna, uh, I see that the pink is the um, gutter water flow where you're, you're intending to put in, yep. but you put a catch basin. Yeah. So what is the catch basin connected to? What do you mean by catch basin? A uh, uh, catch basin is basically a drain, but it'll, and you can direct the flow of the water. So, so I can direct it, to out of the out of the uh, wetlands. Um, so where are you going to direct it to? Yeah. <laughs> to our property, yard. The other side. Like like she said before, half our property is not in the wetlands. 
it's only a, the, like the top half that's in the wetlands. Well, it's not what it's just borderline. Yeah, it's borderline. Within 100 feet. Or within 100 feet yeah. of the wetlands. The back of the yard. Is yeah, the wetlands. Yeah, no, the wetlands. Yeah, it covers probably two thirds of the. Yeah, we'll direct it more in or in our property. Yeah. Um, and you don't show the gutters going on, I guess, the. Left side. Left side. Well, that's a it's a gable end. I guess there's going to be yeah. a. Yeah, it would be a gable. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. So we won't have it. Is that what the doors are going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, chair. Yes. I forgot to include something in my staff report. If you look at the site plan that we received, um, the old site plan from 2005, if you look closely, there was a gravel driveway there before. And it's written on the side in the same spot that these applicants are proposing their gravel driveway. I just want that to be noted. Okay. Um. And there is the easement. This yeah. is large drainage. If I may, the uh, there was a question about the easement. The easement is a drainage easement for uh, underground water that uh, for the town to access if necessary uh, to drain that property or those properties in that area. Um, and it runs uh, north to south along the property line. Um, Georgie, so on this was in our packet and it's titled Narrative Version 9, October 7th, 2021. Um, but I think the version number is off. <laughs> uh, it might be the same narrative, just in your packets twice by accident. But on it, it does have that on the bottom statement. It says that no excavating will be done unless footings are needed to secure the garage. Oh, gutters yes. will be installed to ensure drain ways from the wetland into our property. Oh, yes. Gonna... Yes, that's actually the update of one. I'm sorry. Yes. But then we had another one, so that's why I was... Yes, and then the, the version number was off. I apologize. Yeah, the version numbers are all off. Okay, because that would seem like new information that didn't carry forward. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was in the packet. Yeah. No, it's um, their updated narrative. Uh, I don't think I included it. It's on the website. Yeah. Can I see that? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, busy. Not that I can see. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I thought it was a different one you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like the version numbers were all up. And okay. So I was, and the date. So I was kind of like, is this an old one? Is this a new one? <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, but the version, we're already past nine. Oh, I know. Yeah. So I was wondering what the, yeah, working on like 12 or something. Just want to make sure I. Okay, so I guess if there's no more that you would have to say uh, that you wanted to comment and anybody has comments for, then we could ask if the audience wanted to come forward again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you got to sign in. Well, the, um, the attorney and them. Okay. Good evening, and uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Attorney David Barham from Bloomfield. I, mm -hmm. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Mm -hmm. Hold the microphone closer to you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you pull the microphone oh, can you hear me better? Okay. Yes. So I would like to address a couple of different issues that have been raised by the applicant and the staff report. Um, first, I, I want to make note that the applicant in, his, in, in their materials have indicated uh, that there are two commercial vehicles that are purported to be located in, in this garage. The garage, according to the revised uh, plan that was submitted to you, uh, I believe is 1,800 square feet, which in many cases is larger than some of the smaller homes that exist in Enfield. And it involves, again, two commercial vehicles. The first point that I want to make in, in context of this uh, application is that 
the requirements of your regulations have not been met. Um, your regulation 7.5 indicates all the things that have to be shown uh, on the application and the surveys and the wetlands map that uh, is to be submitted. And in your discussion at the last meeting, you indicated that the survey that we actually introduced um, and made, aware, made your staff aware of um, was done by a surveyor. It did not involve a wetlands person. And it does show, as your chair indicated, about three quarters of the property within the wetlands area. And nevertheless, that's the map that is being used by the applicant. So by the admission of staff and various commissioners who ask questions, the, the map really doesn't meet your, your requirements. It's not the job of the neighbors to provide the map. It's the job of the applicant to hire the proper consultants that are necessary to produce the map. And that failed. So they have not had, they had not given a wetlands description, they have not given soil types, they have not identified vegetation, they have not given a narrative on the proposed um, provision for erosion sedimentation control. They have not addressed alternatives uh, that could have been proposed to you. And I remind you that uh, my clients, uh, the neighbors, uh, are not opposed to this application. They just want to make sure that their properties are not negatively impacted uh, by it because as you know, uh, you know, the neighbor at 60 South Road uh, has agricultural products and excess water, polluted water, can destroy uh, all, all of that uh, attempted growth and, uh, and vegetation. So the, the map itself, what they've proposed, and, and I understand you know, that your staff has attempted to work with them um, and they have you know, assisted uh, in the superimposition of, of these things on the map, but the map by everybody's admission is, is not really current. It doesn't give us the accurate information. There's no drainage analysis. There's no ecological communities that are identified. Uh, again, no mitigation efforts uh, indicated. So I, I would argue that it, it fails. The second point that I want to make, and I tried to allude to it last time, is if you look at your regulations, the zoning regulations, because this was discussed at the last meeting, whether or not uh, this uh, garage is even permitted, um, there is a required 35-foot side yard setback and a 60-foot rear setback. But by the plan submitted, um, you know, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Zorder pointed out, the, 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 the uh, 12 feet is at the maximum and it goes to 10 feet, but it was 2 feet before. So what's being relied on is section 3.30.7 for accessory buildings, which creates, if I read it properly. Sir, sir unfortunately, it's not part of Inland Wetlands, but. I, 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 under, I, understand, I understand, but, but, but the, the problem is, is that uh, you assisted, not you, but yeah, your yeah. staff <laughs> assisted uh, the applicant in the placement of the building, which has impact on water drainage and flow and they placed and told the applicant to put the building mm -hmm. 12 to 10 feet away and and i think that's improper uh i i think that the true that's a matter that zoning will address which is why at the last hearing i suggested that you table the application mm -hmm. and ask the applicant to go to zoning because this is an illegal use. Mm -hmm. It's not only illegal because the definition of accessory building, which is uh, subordinate and incidental, this, this is a commercial use. This is a commercial garage. We don't have any problems with the, the skis, uh, the jet skis and, and, and that kind of thing because that's incidental to the enjoyment. But two commercial trucks, 
And if you look at the, the regulations for commercial trucks, we, we have no information. There's very specific definitional aspects of how many pounds a truck can be, how high it can be, the length of the truck. Uh, we don't even know. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen I, any I agree with you, but we can't, you know. Right. Yeah, so, so this, in my opinion, and looking at the case law, this is, this is not by any definition an accessory. This is a commercial use. The, the applicant, and I understand, they have they've had complaints, yeah. and the complaints are because they're yeah, they're, yeah, they're parking. Yeah, we can't. You know, we have to okay. stop. Okay. So I'm I'm just saying that this violates. Okay, the 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 map that has been suggest pre presented to you is not accurate. Mm -hmm. Okay, it violates all the regulations, and uh, I I I would argue that you know for all those factors that this is you know an unacceptable application now let's go to the criteria uh which is in section 10. okay first of all um you've received at least uh 25 petitioner petitions from residents in the in the neighborhood who had concerned about it who asked for a public hearing that should weigh heavily on your mind that there is concern you received a letter from the connecticut farm bureau mm -hmm. Uh, also expressing concern. So then we look at the criteria, and you have the, you know, feasible and prudent uh, uh, factors that have to be considered. Feasible involves sound engineering uh, plans that have been presented to you. For all the reasons that I've given, these are not sound plans. There has been no wetlands cons consultant, nobody to measure water. I understand you stood with a hose and you know I saw pictures of it, I wasn't there, but our consultant was there. It wasn't, and I, th I think maybe the chair in your uh, remarks indicated that it may not be a, a very good test. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it probably wasn't. So we don't have any, any feasibility here because the plans are, are just not up They're to, to par, they're substandard. And in terms of uh, prudence, which involves how much one spends on, on creating a plan that mitigates the impact to the wetlands, we've had no alternatives. We haven't heard, what, why can't this grid be moved closer uh, to the home. Why does it have to be 12 feet or 10 feet from the property line? Why can't it be 35 feet from the property line? Why can't it be 65 feet from the rear line? Does the garage have to be that big? Uh, are there other things that could have been done but were never shown to this commission? Mm -hmm. And I would say they fail because that's the law. The law is they have to give you uh, feasant and prudent alternatives and argue why the one that they chose, why the alternative that they chose makes sense and, f and, and is permitted under law. That was not done. Long and short term impacts, no discussion on that at all. Irreversible, irretrievable loss of wetlands, no discussion on that. Mitigation efforts, other than staff comments, there have been no mitigation efforts. Uh, the applicant talked about the gutters and, and the drainage leaders. I haven't seen any diagrams or pictures of that. Um, I, when, when they say they turned it on their property, well, their property continues to the bet to the rear toward where the agricultural lands are. Is that where they're talking about? I mean, where are they pointing uh, these, these drains to? There's, there's just been no discussion, no description uh, of that. And let's take a look at the impacts that we do know about. Um, by your own observations, this material, which I'm not even sure we understand what it's made of, is, is basically impervious. The, the water pooled, and, and over time, it's gonna become more compacted and it's going to be worse. If you look at the topographical map, it, 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 it declines toward the agricultural lands by about, the way I look at it, by a foot. So the drainage is definitely, for the most part, toward those agricultural lands. Now, for the first time tonight, the applicant said he put a basin. 
I mean, that should be of concern to you, especially in their application. They put they have a well. Now, uh, where is the well located? Uh, where is this water that, that if it does, you know, uh, go into the ground, where is it in pro approximation to this well? Uh, is it going to contaminate the well? W you raised, you know, by your own comments at the last meeting, uh, what about washing the vehicles, oil spilling out, uh, that kind of thing? He said, you know, he's in the welding business, so there's all sorts of materials that are going to be kept in these trucks. What kind of safety provisions do we have to prevent contamination? And when somebody says they're putting in a catch basin, I mean, all of us have to scratch our heads and say, okay, what are the details of that catch basin? Has it been designed? Have we heard from an engineer how it's going to work? Is it a hole in the ground or is there a pipe coming from it? Is it going into the easement area that the code enforcement person said, which by the way, my client says that pipe is broken and it hasn't functioned for years. So what, what purpose does that easement have? And if the pipe is not functioning properly, is there even going to be more water in that easement area because it's, it's not flowing properly to the street and, and, uh, and, and the lines there? Uh, we, we don't know those, those issues. Um, so I, did, I didn't put a time limit, but we have a couple other speakers. So. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, summarize. Uh, we don't know so much information about the contamination, the, the, the roof, the drainage, that I, I honestly believe that, that the application f should fail. That's not our purpose. Our purpose is not to ask you, it, our purpose was not to be here to ask that it be denied. But I can't help but say it should be denied at this point. Uh, I hope that the applicant comes back and does this properly and works with my client to make sure that it can function properly. But right now, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a mess. It's, it's not, it's not a, you know, an appropriate application. Uh, it's not professionally done. Uh, that you know it doesn't meet your standards and and this this commission as uh, and I don't know the, the the resident but I think you you referred to her as Ms. LaPlante uh, I couldn't have given a better speech if I tried uh, your job is to protect the wetlands your job is to abide by your regulations what she said applies absolutely to this application mm -hmm. Uh, you, you only have one choice here, and that's to deny this application. It, fail, it, it fails miserably. And, um, you know, I, I would just say look at the plans. This is a huge garage, and it's huge for only one reason. It's housing two commercial vehicles that don't belong on this site. And, in fact, the regulations only allow one commercial vehicle with certain standards. That's a violation. So. It, this should be go. There are so many zoning issues that I know you. I know you don't have cognizance, but you do have cognizance over the ability to say to somebody, "Go to the other commissions first. This is not the commission to come to first because there are too many issues that will impact the wetlands." Okay. Thank you. So I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next was Susan Coyote. Uh, Suzanne Show. Coyote. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you did. We did have a um, letter from you today oh, you in our packet. Okay. Yeah, in our packets. Did you want to speak to it? Or? I'll just. Uh, should I read it or? Yeah, you could give it just it's a brief summary. Yeah. yeah. Just. Um, Susan. Of that letter. Yeah, we have. We have them. Thank you. Thank you. I am Suzanne Choate with Design Professionals, a registered professional engineer in Connecticut. Um, I am here just to update you since our last hearing. I also attended the site inspection on October 15th. Um, I still find the information provided in the application lacking because I'm unable to make a determination of impact as that was my charge. Um, as previously stated, the information submitted does not include proposed topography, temporary permanent soil erosion control, water quality evaluation, mitigation, drainage calculations. We are concerned with um, 
that the applicant has not demonstrated the impacts of the development on the wetland resources and abutting properties. Um, I did observe the water test at that site visit and saw that the water did um, saturate the gravel and then mostly puddled on top, which leads me to believe it is mostly impervious. I noticed that the edging for the gravel drive um, and most likely the proposed garage will block the current overland storm flow from the high point, which was maybe about halfway on the house or so, um, toward that wetland. So a little bit of concern of whether or not that affects the wetland itself that you're taking away some of the water, blocking some of the water that, would, that gets there now. Um, and basically I maintain my opinion that the applicant be, pro, be required to provide the application documents mentioned previously by um, Attorney Barham. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next was Andrew. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Andrew Urbanowitz for the record, uh, 25 South Road, Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, thank you once again for the opportunity to address you all, and I, I will be brief as I only have a few paragraphs to share with you tonight. <laughs> um, I would like the Commission to know that we use the fields that are adjacent to this project primarily for the production of food crops, which include rotations of sweet corn, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, and winter squash, as well as some cut flowers. Food safety is a priority on the farm, and in fact, I have been through the Good Agricultural Practices Training Seminars presented by the Connecticut Department of Agriculture uh, through a, an affiliation with USDA. Contaminants that enter the wetland system on our farm will be taken up by plants growing in these fields. It's just part of the growth cycle of any plant. Since we do not have many basic pieces of engineering data, we really do not know the impact of this project. If this project were to create an excessive runoff event resulting in the entry of water, that results in the entry of water could become an issue for the food safety of the vegetables being grown there. I would then have a duty to make USDA and Connecticut Department of Agriculture aware of such an event, and they would likely require me to destroy those crops to guard against a food safety hazard. That's the concern in a nutshell. I do not want to see the effects of this project cause an abrupt ending to our crops, especially when proper planning would allow the applicant to both achieve its goal and not have these potential impacts. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that wanted to speak for this application? For or against? Is there anybody else in the audience to speak for or against? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the next. Uh, do the applicants want to come back up and address any concerns or issues? <clears throat> How you doing? Um, oh. I just want to say that half the argument had nothing to do with the wetlands. That's all we keep getting of story that just brings us around and around in a circle. I, I get it. We're not trying to, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to mess up, trying to mess with people's, their crops. You know, I get it. And that's the thing, you know, you can flood the wetlands, you can, you can mess up the crops. That's why I'm trying to do everything that I can do mm -hmm. to make the water go the other way. Have it go the other way, the catch basin can, can do that. And they keep saying stuff like, I already did it. You guys came to the house the other day. I haven't done anything. I stopped right when they told me to stop. So yeah, now it's talking about, oh, you, dug, you, dug, you dug the catch basin. I didn't dig the catch basin. This is, you want, you want it answers now, but nothing has happened yet. This is just a proposal. We're not, nothing's up. You know, I haven't even, you guys seen the, it doesn't even go past the thing. And then um, the town said, the fabric. Maybe I could change the fabric. Maybe I can, you know, so I can go through more, change the rock. I can do all that, that's okay. I can do all that, but to, to say no, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, thank you. We Anybody don't have two commercial vehicles. Yes, we don't. It just keeps adding Okay, stuff. go ahead. Do you have any comments? I just have a question. Sure. You designed this yourself? Uh, yes. The, okay. the road? Or yeah, the, the so driveway. the driveway and yeah. everything was designed by you? Yes. Not by an engineer, not by, just by your visual, this is, you measured off? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. No background, I am an engineer. 
Okay. All right. I, Thank I you. I did not know that. Okay. I did not know that. Yes, Thank I'm you. An, okay. an engineer. And you have done structurally all this work yourself at yes. this point. And you will be completing the work by yes. yourself. As far as the garage, who will be putting in the garage? That's going to be put up. Um, I started because I wanted to go to bigbuildingsdirect.com. And they come and they pull the permit and they build it. It's three days. They build it. They do all And that. at that point, it would go before zoning to make sure that the building met zoning Correct. qualifications. Before that point. Correct. Yeah. Before that before point that. is what I'm yeah. saying. That's what I meant. Yes. I'm sorry. Before yeah. that point. So we need to establish a location first and then move forward. Yeah. I didn't want to. I'm not going to buy it if I'm already going to get the no. Correct. Know. Okay. I just want to make sure. Because yeah. I wanted. I, I was not at the October 5th yeah. meeting. I apologize. So I'm just trying to get some clarification. Yeah. I'm not building it. They build it. They okay. do all that stuff. Right. Doing the road in the so, yeah. all right. But the driveway itself, you have yes, designed doing, with an engineering background. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just, just to clarify, I think you're an aerospace engineer, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, but the principles, some of the principles still pertain. Um, but you do get a bachelor's degree to be an aerospace nope, engineer. I understand. Right? Yeah. Learn yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so some of the concerns I have, first of all, um, there is uh, a, a good question was brought up. Why why do you have to move it so far back? Why can't you move it closer? Um, well, because before we know the the um, setbacks, but the setbacks put it right on a tree line that they oh, had a old. If you look on some of those papers, you see like a blue square. Yeah, that was the old building that used to be there. They put a there's a sidewalk there right, right, right. in the right in the middle of our right mm -hmm. runs through the middle of our yard a sidewalk so we can't put it there like on the tree line sidewalk and a tree line so we had to push it back a little bit and that's why we were like that's why the proposal can we put it in the back you know we didn't we, we didn't know that's why we're in front of you guys so we're like can we put it there i can control the water coming off the roof and i can fix the road change the gravel, change the, the fabric. I could do all that. But that's why it was just proposal, because we have another proposal, if need be. So, so why not put it where this old building was? Because yeah, it's, it's the blue on here, right? Yeah, it's like that, that blue right there. Shed right there already. Because it's like sideways. You see where the blue, like, yeah. Yeah, kind of so you see, you see my yard. It would literally be right there, right mm -hmm. there, right there right like there. sideways. Um, and just a kind of a quick comment. I don't think that they're implying that you've already done this. I think what what they and we are looking for is we want to have a detailed plan of of all these impactful things before we can make an informed decision. I think I mentioned this, and and some of the things that you have are kind of iffy, like we're not sure what you mean. When you say a catch basin, we're thinking that it's something that's going to collect water, and then what happens to that water there? So we don't have a plan to see where that goes. And, you know, when we hear catch basin, we have a specific thing in mind mm -hmm. um, that, that we know what that implies. Um, but I'm thinking that that's what, what your idea of a catch basin is and what our idea is are, are two different things. Um, so I think that's that's still where um, I'm kind of at. Like, I, there's still too many iffy things. You know, just saying that you're going to direct it away, that's not enough because, you know, for instance, if you look at the topography map that you, I, I think you drew on today, you can see that the flow goes towards that wetlands. So, you know, you can say you're going to put the gutters back towards your house, but that water from that catch basin, what happens to it there? Is it, it going to go off, you know, towards these, these farmlands? Another concern I have was um, last meeting, um, you said that it was processed gravel. Processed gravel is different than what this is. This is a recycled material that has who knows what in it. You know, I saw concrete in it. I saw asphalt. Um, so... You know, the, the fact that, again, the, the water flow is going towards a farm, that concerns me um, to, to know what that is. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I would suggest is definitely changing the material, using something that's more natural, mm -hmm. like a true processed gravel that's all natural material, mm -hmm. not man-made. Um, uh, the other concern that um, I did read in um, Ms. Uh, Choate's uh, letter is that, and, and I did notice it as well, is the edging of this geogrid. Um, 
I'm concerned that it could in, in terms of sheet flow from the rest of your yard. What happens if we do get those storms and that water flows to that edging? That edging is impervious, it's plastic. What happens to that water? It's gonna direct it down the slope, which is towards the wetlands and the, the, the farm. So that's a concern because it's above the, you know, you've, you've, the you've des designed this so it's above the grass. Mm -hmm. Whereas if this was below, if it was dug in, um, that would kind of be a different, yeah, it would be a different situation. <laughs> yeah. And I know, um, you know, the part that you did have finished that we did test it wasn't graded. So um, I don't believe it was the, the, the greatest test to, to see which way the water is going to flow. But also it didn't have the gravel that you were going to put on top. You're going to put a pea stone on top mm -hmm. of it um, a, a few inches. So, uh, I, you know, I don't think it was necessarily um, the best test for that. Um, Question, where where are we? Um, I know the public hearing go on for, what, 35 days? Yeah. Unless we do an extension? Right. 65, we can extend it, right? We have to make a decision. Yeah. 65. You can extend it. Yeah. I also just want you to um, note that the part of the driveway um, has not, that's in the wetland jurisdiction, has not been filled in with gravel yet. Right, right, yeah, yep, yep. Um, one thing I want to note about that, whoops, there it is. One thing I want to note about that, and it was was brought up, it's in our regulations. The part that everybody keeps saying we're not, it's not part of our regulations because it's without, you know, past 100 yards, the front part of that gravel drive. It is if we say that this is can impact the wetlands, and if the water's going down there and it's going from the front and it's traveling down to the back to the wetlands, we can rule on that. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, we can. So I, I, this is only two feet from the edge, and if we're gonna say we wanna move it, yeah. I would move the beginning of it also, yeah. away from that two feet, move it over. Yeah. Move it over to line up. Because the other thing we noticed, it goes down and it turns and it goes down. When the water was gaining up speed, right. it went down, what's gonna happen it's not going to turn. <laughs> it's going to go down off the grid and into the wet, into the grass, and then over into the to the side and to the back. Yeah. It's not going to stay on that path just because yeah. that path is there. If there's too much water pulling, yeah. I'd like to see it more like it was straight yes. and push it all away from the edge and have it all go straight. If that's yep. something that we might want to do. So um, to what you said about um, the building and the grade, okay? So it's grayed down right now. It's facing, water runs to the farm right now, right? Grade, right. okay? Right. So it's so grayed down, down right, right now. now. It's, it's facing, facing water, water runs, runs to, to the farm, farm right now. It's echoing. Uh, the TV must have. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm potentially putting a, a building is not, professionals they're going to come and put it up so it's not graded anymore the floor is already graded it's going to remain graded but the building that what the water is running off of is not graded it's level it's a level building well, and then the road doesn't make i don't understand the road because there you guys already approved a road to be there the road's already there. No, we haven't approved anything yet. <laughs> not that road not my road the road that oh, was the road previous road. there previously there the, the driveway that was already there. So if we didn't put anything on it and just kept our, it's just gonna puddle and mud up if we didn't do anything. Yeah, I can't speak to that. It wasn't here that, I don't know when that was done, but yeah. so a couple things. So another concern that I've had um, all along as well is because um, there's, you're gonna put the same material as the base inside of this garage. Right. Um, so, my other concern is because you're going to be storing vehicles in there, what happens to any of the material? And this, you know, we, we take this into consideration on every um, project that we consider is every vehicle, new, old, it loses water, it loses fluids. What happens to those fluids 
in, um, you know, how is it controlled, what's done to it. And in your situation, you don't know. It's just going to go into the, this ground um, and, and right through a permeable, what we're considering a permeable um, s substrate. And where are those potential pollutions going to go? So, and to the point where, yes, the building is going to be level. So then we go back to you have this, all this water going into this catch basin. What's going to happen to that water after that catch basin? Mm. That's, that's, that's why I put on the plan, direct it back. You direct it out of the wetlands. So it's, you're moving, potentially moving water out of the wetlands. So how do you do that, though, from the catch basin? The catch basin releases water when it fills to a certain level, and it, can, and it goes down. A, you can put a, a pipe uh, and direct it. That's what we need to know. We, yeah. is how, how that is designed and how that works. But we can't I, just we can't just we can't just take your word and say I'm going to make sure that happens. We have to have a plan that shows how you're going to make that happen that's feasible. Hmm. Is that even necessary? Can it just be gutters yes. and if it becomes a problem? No, 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 not no. for what we have to everything consider. Everything is just what if this happens? What if this happens? Like you can just go on forever. So, so when we get applications that come before us, mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of them are professionally done, you know, by engineers i know you're an engineer everything but whatever we get all the specs mm -hmm. we get the catch basins we want what, how they're made what they're made of where the flow is we get everything mm -hmm. this permit that we have not seen for this building even we would even have that in front of us so we know what that building is if it's been approved if it all that kind of stuff we don't even have that permit and we keep asking about that and i understand why you haven't gone forward with it but we would have all the specs for everything that and we don't have any of those specs. We have none. And then the, the well, building is, yeah. I'm not building it. If I was building the building, I would have specs for it. I'm buying it. Right, but it for the catch built. basin, we have nothing. We have it on here in just a little picture with an X in it saying it's the catch basin. What's it made out of? How's it going to be made? Where are the water's going? We would have all those in our. Are you going to clean? How do you clean up? How do you clean it? How do you keep it, you know, maintained over the years? We don't have any of that stuff, yeah. and I, you know, I know they've been helping you, but I, I don't yeah. think you've gotten. And the comp the company you're buying it from, they have plants. They they can they, they can provide you with that. That that, um, yeah. They deal with this probably every single day. So yeah, so, so we don't have all those. Yeah, they provide plans. it if you purchase it, but we're not going to purchase it, and then if we're going to get denied. True. Yeah. And so it's a yeah, it's, they, that's what, they might that's give it to you, answer. but maybe not. <laughs> that's the answer we got from them. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, I can verify that as I looked up the business as well. They will not provide specs unless the customers buy the buildings first. Mm -hmm. It's a um, building located out of Tampa, Florida. Why would you hand out engineering specs just for everybody for free? Well, yeah. the building itself, you can kind yeah. of get away yeah. with, but like this catch yeah. basin, we need to know more yeah. about, we need, you know, the flow of the water, all that type of stuff. We so don't that's have a, that's it. That's definitely half, because yeah. we were hoping that just the gutters would be enough, but if a catch yeah. basin is now. No, no. Half and and be, everything has to be we'll get, on the we'll site plan. We're missing more. things on the site plan. They're not, it's not complete. It's not a complete mm -hmm. site plan. It's not, we don't have all the information that we need, as we would expect from other applications. It's an, it's an incomplete application. Right. And I, I do, you know, I know the attorney and I know it. Well, I don't know you personally, but I know you mentioned it a few times. And it's not in our peer review. And I have looked up that regulation regarding the setback. And I have to agree. I think you need to go to planning and zoning and get that, or the town attorney and get that, an answer on that. Because I agree with them that the setback does fit in this situation. We got a setback, and that was only if it's attached. If you read the regulations, though, it's Article 4, <clears throat> that 10. I think that, and that's important to us because um, it determines where all this water is going and everything else. If you set it back further, it makes a big difference than if it's right, of, you know, right next to the wetlands. So I, it, it's important. I, you know, I really believe you should get a ruling on that. The, the building. I think, I think. Excuse me, Chair. It's not correct. Um, we have an answer to the setbacks. It, it satisfies the regulations, the location of the building. It's, Ex it's an accessory building. It's That's an accessory building that shall encroach upon the, so in addition to, to no building, accessory building, or structures, um, shall encroach upon the minimum setback front side and rear from the below, from the chart that they have on the, P and Z. So it's, it's a zoning it's a, and the zoning and P and Z really should look at it. And 
It's five feet from a property line. That's what it is for an accessory. Mr. Us, because where it's sitting here makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> you can move it over or whatever. You know, if it's if it's not gonna if they don't want it there, then you got to come back. Chair. Yeah. Um, accessory buildings are actually allowed five feet from the property lines. No, they're not. So I, I think you really, really need to go. There's, okay, there's a um, go get a. Because we were told five, yeah. and we're yeah. trying to do yeah. a ten. Yeah, yeah I think I think you no. need to get a ruling on so it. That's, that's, now we're telling yeah. that's not even yeah. it. Like we just keep. But that, it's not our purview. So you. So I think what she's trying to say is that it might be to your benefit to go to them first, so that. Or just ask. You, you don't want to build the road, and then what if they tell you from. Um, that you have to move the building. Now you have to move the road, but in order to move the road, you got to come back to us. You see what I'm saying? So it, it almost makes sense for you to go and go to the- And you uh, don't want to spend money on application. If it, if, right. you know, just go talk to them. I think you need to talk to them. You need to get a ruling. I thought the town told them where to place this building. He did. I mean, so the, if, if our zoning department already told them this is where the building is. The zoning is. department didn't tell them. Okay. They didn't so go to zoning or. This, this, would, not go, this yeah. would not go to planning and zoning. This would come to me for a permit for an accessory building. It satisfies, the location satisfies the requirements under zoning. It only re is required to be five feet from a rear or side property line. And we went to zoning and they told us to go to you guys and to you guys first. Yeah. And if that was the case, Planning and zoning requires something from wetlands before they review or uh, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But in this case, it wouldn't circle, even go to planning and zoning. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think we have enough no. on our permit to. We don't have all the specs that we need or whatever. But that's my thought. <laughs> yeah. So let me see. What do we have next? Because one of the recommendations that staff had to, um, or was it staff or engineering? Somebody. That you could make a retention around the building? Yes. Yes, that was a staff comment verified by engineering. Engineering yep. also recommended they could remove the barrier entirely. Right. So. The weed barrier? Yeah, the weed barrier. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was just to make sure that weeds don't come later down the road. But if that's easy. Yes, yes. If you get weeds through that. Um, As I mean, yeah. 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 We just excuse me, really commissioners, which is fine, <laughs> which is fine. Five feet, five no inches. Um, Um, anybody else have any comments or? Yeah. I think a lot of good questions. Excuse me, I'm um, chair. I'm sorry I to interrupt. I hear your frustration because okay. you want to get it in and get it done. And we want you to get it in, but we want you to get it done properly. Really? And we're kind of uh, uh, tasked with making sure that every question is answered before we vote on something. I don't feel comfortable voting on it. Um, if if okay. it gets closed and voted on tonight, I wouldn't feel comfortable voting. So, so we we still have time. Um, you know, yeah. we're we're bound by a certain time frame, and I think that there is some more. I don't want to call it design work, but some more just information that we need that I think you could do working with staff again, um, you know, to, to mitigate some of these water issues, because that's really what our purview is. Um, and in terms of putting a retention um, system, like a swale system around this unit, uh, maybe maybe repositioning it a little bit, maybe a little farther away from the property line. Um, some more detail on what you tend to do with this um, retention bait or this um, um, catch basin. I think if you come back with some more, work with them a little bit more on what that entails, some more of these mitigations of some of these concerns with the water. I think 
it would be in a better place. place. Yeah. And you have time. So, you know, I, I know, you know, it's starting to get cold and you're, <laughs> you want to kind of get this done and moved on. But, you know, we we have um, a job to do and we want to make sure that this is done right. There is definitely concern and, you know, from a lot of parties, including myself. So I think that there's some um, tweaks that can be done and some um, you know, we can have a better plan of what's going forward before we vote on it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, is there any specs on the geo grid? Like, how long does it last? Does it? Because it did seem like it's flexible, and that. And if you have cars going over, it, or vehicles going over it, I'm sure, I can. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure something. That, that's probably in the email like, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere, I can yeah. Get that. that's yeah, easy. Yeah, wherever you purchased it from, I'm yeah, sure exactly. they probably have they probably have pre-made the 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 documents that oh, go yeah. right on the plan. Oh yeah, that's yeah. easy. Yeah, that, that that's easy. helpful to yeah, us. Yeah, but that yeah. is but that is not the only thing. You know, you just you said the geo grid. You know, I can get you that in two minutes, but it's like that's not the only thing. There well, has been more how, things. Yep, the more the more information we have, the better. You know what I mean? It's because we don't know that you're even doing it right. <laughs> is is what we're saying. You know, we don't even know that that's being installed properly because we don't have the the plan to show that that's being you know on how that's installed. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, those are some of the things. Again, it's you know. It, it, you do aerospace, you know, it, oh yeah, the tolerance is fine. We can put this stator here and it'll, it'll be fine. It'll fly. <laughs> right? we, 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 it's the same thing. No, because Pratt and Whitney would never, <laughs> uh, they would never understand what you just said. Right? They would never understand. Yeah. No, yeah. tolerances are, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, that's not for this meeting. No, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, but no. you know what I'm saying yeah. is we, we have no. to have all the information and we can't just go on your word and say, yeah, I'm going to do it right. We, we have I to believe have, you will, but, yeah. and you want to do it right. right. <laughs> but we need to have it to see. All right. Georgie, can it. you help them with some of these things so that they can get this expedited, please? Yes, I recommend um, continuing the public hearing. Yeah, we need a motion. Can we continue the public, because they can go on for 35 days, but they would have to extension. give us an extension? Yeah. Yes, an extension request. Okay, so you would have to give us an extension to uh, for the to allow yourself to continue this so that you can get that additional documentation if not then we would vote well we could vote later but we'd have to end the uh, public, public hearing public hearing yeah so if we want to extend the public hearing we need their permission yeah in right. writing I'm um, just verifying dates for one second. Okay. So, so it was opened uh, October, October 5th. So they have 65 days. You have 65 days to uh, review this. So there's still uh, time well, under the 60 days. You have so many days time. for the public hearing before you have to close it. We have enough time. We have, we have, I think 35 days, and then you get 65 overall to vote, to, for us to come up with a vote. Correct. 30, the 35 after yeah. that. So where are we at for right now? So we're going to just table it, right? Yeah. Yes. That's all I need. Yes. Just table. Okay. No. We do not need the extension. Oh, I'm right sorry. Now. I had that backwards. For two weeks to come back in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. That's correct. That's okay. Correct. Yeah, that yes. would be about right. Okay. Okay. I move that we uh, table this. Um, sorry. IW 629-52 South <laughs> Road um, until the, uh, the next meeting. November 2nd. Uh, it's election day. Well, let's say to the um, next meeting. Uh, pardon me. On the agenda, at the end of the agenda, there's an item for meeting discussion. I haven't put it on the agenda, but it's on mine, and we'll discuss that towards that end. So it may not be the second. It may be a day or two after. But to the next meeting. Who seconded the? I'll second. Okay. Can I have roll call, please? Donna Corbin Sabinski. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Carrie Ann Howe. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Marie Pisner. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Six in favor. Motion passes to table this to our next meeting. Uh, we'll determine the date at the end because it's election day, so we'll probably move the, yep. the meeting a day or two.
Okay. You don't have your best interest in that, do you? No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, she does not. Okay, so next on our agenda is old business, which is the POCD chapters one through six. Finally printed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I move we table that uh, just because we have so much going on tonight. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, well. Um, new we do have a meeting this week, so. Yeah. New business is next on the agenda. IW 631 8 Pinecrest Road. Pinecrest Road. Application for a wetland permit to construct an above ground pool within a 100 foot upland review area and stump grinding. Scott Sh Shubb. Applicant yep. owner, map 97, lot 91, R33 zone. Are they present? Oh, there he is. Present. Could you just say your name and address for the record? Uh, my name is Scott Shubb. Uh, it's 8 Pinecrest Road, Enfield, Connecticut. How you doing? Good, you? <laughs> Good. So what do you, you want to put in a pool? Yep. Had a pool just replacing a previous one, ended up uh, collapsing over the winter. So we wanted to go a little bit bigger and realized I had to get approval from uh, wetlands. Yeah. I do have a staff report if you'd like me to read yes, it. Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. I was looking through my <laughs> notes here. <laughs> um, all right. Um, this is an application for an inland wetlands permit to construct a new 15 foot by 30 foot by 52 inch above ground pool on the property known as 8 Pinecrest Road. The property is currently fenced in with a self closing gate. Due to the topography of the property, the applicant has two proposed plans for the pool location for the commission to review. Please see pool plans A and plan B. This application is coming before the agency because it is, in, it is within the Upland Review Area and the proposed disturbance is located from the Upland Review Area. The original pool had collapsed from the last winter and due to this, new support footing will have to be poured in the location for the deck depending on the pool location. The original deck from the original pool will be used for the new pool. The applicant mentions any excavated dirt that is removed from the ground to level out the area for the new pool will not leave the property and will be redistributed on the property to fix areas of the ground that are uneven. Pool plan A shows less of an impact and would require less excavation than pool plan B. There are also six tree stumps that the applicant would like to address. Instead of removing the root systems, he is proposing to grind them two inches below the ground surface, fill in, and then smooth over. Some of the tree locations are in the way of the proposed pool locations, and to prevent runoff and erosion, the applicant will be installing silt fencing below the work areas for mitigation. This includes the area that will be excavated for a flat surface for the proposed pool locations. Um, and I have no comments except for the zoning department that says the plans satisfy, satisfy the zoning requirements. And that's it. Thanks. Okay. So which one do you prefer, A? A. Um, which one is A? Is that one? This one? <laughs> kind of goes. No, I actually prefer B at this point. Oh, that one? Because A would probably require removing more dirt to create it level, because that's towards the end of my property, which has more of a hill. So I actually like my second plan better at this point. Was your pool part uh, the B, plan B, before it fell apart? Yeah, actually, um, the position, oh, right. Okay. So the original pool, um, Shown in that picture, so I want to put the new pool actually pretty much in the same location, but the long way is towards my property. So, like Plan Thank B you. shows, but reusing and plus the electrical is already there from the uh, previous right. pool. So, you know, if I put it there, then I don't got to move the electrical, and it's less leveling to be done. Right. So you're gonna dig out rather than raise? <laughs> yes. Build? Okay. Yeah. Uh, from my understanding and everybody that I've talked to about installing a pool, if you add, you run into problems down the road because of settling. Whereas right now it's already settled, it should be fine. Speaking of settling, you're gonna also have that when you stump, stump grind. <laughs> right, which is another reason why plan A probably isn't good because then that's almost on top of those stumps and I'm mm. not sure how much grinding they'll end up doing. So yeah, I'll run into that issue probably down the road too if I did it down there. Mm. <laughs> you, I actually like A better I do because too. it's A. further away I from my know. house. Personally, I think B. I like B. Yeah. You like B. B. Oh, I'm leaning towards B, so I'm good with that. Let's go with B. Good. For the record, it's a full moon. <laughs> hmm. 
Does anybody have any questions? Or? Do, you, do you know how far they're going to be digging down? <sighs> Judging by the slight slope in that area, it's under a foot, I'd say. That's okay. at most, it's probably about a foot. If not, I'd say more like six inches. I also got sprinkler systems that I'm trying to avoid them from hitting, so, you know. Mm. <laughs> I have a question. Yep. Um, if you had to drain, you know, drain the pool for whatever reason, yep. um, where would the water drain? Uh, I'd probably drain? just run a hose out to the, the front. Right. I got sewers in the neighborhood. <coughs> so that's, that's, yeah. no. Would it drain towards the wetlands or away from the wetlands? No, he said to the road. To the road. Yeah. To the road oh, in okay. that direction. I didn't hear that. Thank oh, you. It's going to you use a hose. And yeah. Yeah. This application was very well prepared. Thank you. Had a little help from well, Regina. Staff did a good job helping you. I like when things are prepared. It's easier <laughs> to make a decision that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understandable. Do we have a uh, a motion? Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to approve IW number six thirty one eight Pinecrest Road. Which plan? Uh, um, uh, uh, plan B, um, for the, uh, for wetlands permit to construct an above ground pool within the 100 foot upland review area, um, and stump grinding, um, with, uh, our standard, um, conditions and, um, special condition that you're going to put up and um, silt fence wherever there's um, uh, digging to be done, uh, excavation. Yeah. Pretty much the whole back of the property yeah. since the trees yeah. awesome. cover the whole back of the property that I want to perfect grind. So. I will second. Okay, roll call please. Donna Corbin Sabinski? Yes. Virginia Higley? Yes. Carrie Ann Howe? Yes. Robert Hendrickson? Yes. Marie Pisner? Yes. Gavin Zorda? Yes. Six in favor, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Plan B. Plan All right, B. plan B it is. <laughs> We're all coming over to swim in plan B. <laughs> next year though. Yes, <laughs> it's too cold. Uh, next on our agenda is IW 632, uh, 30, 32 Bacon Road, application for, <coughs> excuse me, a wetland permit to construct three buildings, a 2,400 square foot office and two 4,800 square foot warehouse with associated parking accessible drives, utilities, and other amenities. Mark O'Neill, applicant representative. Joseph LaCorey, applicant owner, map 95, lot 31, and 32, I-1 zone. Good evening. Hi. Say your name and address for the record. I'm Mark O'Neill. I live at 82 Juniper Drive in Windsor Locks. I'm the president of Hamlet Homes and the applicant. With me is Greg Lachik from Banesh Company. Want to give us a little background on what year? Yeah, we basically have a, a, a four acre parcel on Bacon Road and roughly two and a half acres of it is all wetlands. We designed uh, for three buildings to keep the disturbance as minimal as we can on any of the wetlands. So we are going to disturb approximately 4,000 square feet, give or take, um, to construct the roadway, and we're actually mitigating by adding 40, 4,300, thank you, 4,300 square feet of new biofiltration systems that you can see in the darker green. So we're uh, actually reducing the peak flows uh, considerably um, on the runoffs and actually retaining most of it in a larger wetland uh, because as we're building the road, um, Essentially, what we did was we established this higher elevation here surrounded by a road that was built up and the adjacent property. Excuse me, um, can you just use the microphone right there? There's a yep. wireless one. There's one on the okay. right next to Oh, you can use those? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, is this working? There. Check, check, check. Nope. Is the light on? Oh, does it not go through? Is the light on? Yes, it is. Okay, good. It should work. So here we essentially established this upper wetlands region as a natural uh, detention basin where all of our water, except for down here, here, and here, 
in these smaller bioretention areas is diverted directly into the lower um, wetlands. The higher ones up here uh, and here, this is a leader taking our roof flow into this detention basin, is actually getting, um, go, getting uh, treated twice when it's going through here, going over our weirs, our broad-quested rear, weir there, and also when it's going through there and over the edge, over our uh, riprap level spreader. So are there any questions about the general design of where our water is going? Or actually where it's not going. <laughs> right. It's not really going anywhere. Right. It's a very, very flat side. Yeah, it's, so. it's actually flat there. The land is completely flat. Um, excuse me, Chair. I do have a staff report, if you like, later on. I have a staff report for all the applications. Actually, I have one question. Where do you plan on stockpiling your snow? Because I hear we're going to have an epic winter. <laughs> Uh, I, I would have to double check, but I believe it's using the bioretention areas. It, it is using the bioretention areas. And I hope you're wrong. Yeah, we all yeah. do. What? Have you seen the squirrels running around? I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he covered most of it, but I'll just repeat. <laughs> um, this is an application for a wetlands permit to construct three new buildings on the parcels known as 30 and 32 Bacon, both covered in wetland soils. One building will be 2,400 square foot office building, and then two 4,800 square foot warehouse buildings. Um, this application is coming before the agency because it includes an anticipated wetlands disturbance of 4,207 square feet and an approximate anticipated wetlands mitigation of 4,300 square feet. Anticipated construction is between fall 2021 and fall 2022. Public sewer connection is available for this project. There are five proposed wetlands buyer retention areas as seen on site plan sheet C-2.1 of the site plans. The first retention area is 1,260 square feet. Second is 947. Both areas are located in the front of the parcel. The third retention area is 497 square feet, located in the front of the second proposed building to the left of the site. The fourth is 945 square feet, located on the left back side of the second proposed building. And the fifth is 651 square feet, located by the right side of the third proposed building in the back of the property. Site plan sheet C-1.1 explains the erosion and sediment control plan. The project proposes to disturb approximately 0.9 acres of wooded area with the site topography sloping northeast to southwest away from Bacon Road. Approximately 1.10 acres will be disturbed by the project, which includes the clearing of woodland and wetlands, stripping, stockpiling, and removal of existing topsoil. The contractor will be installing silt fencing and hay barrels as an ENS control. Dust mitigation will be mitigated periodically by dampening exposed soils of water with piles not in use for 30 days or more will be covered with tarp or temporarily seeded to prevent airborne dust. It is also noted on sheet C-1.1 that all sediment protection items will be checked on a weekly basis and after a storm generating a runoff to ensure good working condition. As for staff comments, I've received none. Thank you. The um, staff report that we received in our packages, we have page one, three, and five. We're missing pages two and four. I apologize. I would also like to add, sorry. I, I would also like to add that this was, um, this uh, stormwater design was done in coordination with the town engineer and uh, it was just signed off on this morning. Yeah, he signed off and said it was favorable. I believe you have that. Oh, I haven't checked it recently, actually. Okay. I can verify. If you need a copy of it, let me know. On this one, yeah. A very thorough application. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. I had my question. It's no. What? <laughs> This isn't really wetlands, but just out of curiosity, will you be merging both lots into one? Correct. Okay, thank you. Just curious. I 
also have to say that it appears you made best use of the property. Mm. I'm sure you could have done it easier another way or two, yeah. but this <laughs> way seems to yeah. be the less impactful. Yeah. We, and that's actually what we tried to do, to be honest with you, is to come up with something that was less impactful across the, uh, yes, we wanted a larger building, we wanted to do, but it just, it doesn't work on the site. And this works much better um, across the board for, especially for the wetlands, because it is, a, it's, it's a difficult site. It's a difficult site with poorly draining wetland soils, which did actually uh, uh, allow us to uh, increase or decrease our peak flow by up to 60% oh, yeah. in the in the 100 year, so. Um, excuse me. So I actually did receive an, a comment from engineering today. Um, he said all the items indicated in the September 8th, 2021 plan review have been addressed. And then fire commented um, that the fire department has no issues with this application at the time. And that are, those are the only comments I've received. Question. Oh, wait, so the there's one more. I'm so sorry. There's one more. Um, water pollution control commented the minimum slope for six inch PVC is 2%. Any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. And that's the last one. Question from the drawing. So, we had, you know, some of the plans we got were, were pretty excellent. And it shows trucks turn. Yes. How, how's the truck going to turn around from that far building? Oh, it doesn't go there. So, it goes here. This is, is a loading dock there. Oh, did that? Okay, so it did, it does show trucks on the plan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, how are they going to turn around there? There's no way. We showed an SU thir uh, an SU30 there going up to SU that top. There's an SU30 there. Yeah. Right. Just so you know, you, to to be heard and recorded, you have to be speaking into the phone oh, microphone. Mark. Uh, there is an SU30 turnaround at that far building. There is. Okay. There is. And if you need, I believe in your package, there should be a part on C31. It should show the direction of all the travel for all of the vehicles. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah. I'm like, it. Uh... And those are actually very conservative. So the truck drivers can maneuver those vehicles much better than that shows. <laughs> Depends on how long they've been out of school. <laughs> well, that's if we can even get them to come anymore. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so, so you have the turnaround in that um, that, that area. Okay. Yeah. Um, what sheet are you guys looking at? Uh, the parking plan C three point one. for the site, that's for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah. Anybody have any more questions or comments or concerns? Or to do them all. <laughs> all right. I will make a motion um, to approve IW number 632 30 to 32 Bacon Road 
um, application for a wetlands permit to construct three buildings, a 2,400 square foot office, and two 4,800 square foot warehouse with associated parking, accessible drives, utilities, and other amenities. Mark O'Neill, applicant, representative uh, Joseph Licori, applicant owner, map 95, lots 31 and 32, I1 zone. I will second. <laughs> <laughs> Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Carrie Ann Howe. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Marie Pisner. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Six in favor. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. You too. Um, next on the agenda is XIW number 634, 117 Post Office Road, application for a wetland permit to construct a modular classroom. Thank you. Place of an existing basketball court at the Still Learning Early Learning Center. Um, owner Matt 54, lot 6, R32. I am representing him tonight. <laughs> um, it's a pretty straightforward application. There's not, no disturbance or anything. Um, so this is an application for wetlands permit to construct a temporary 23.7 um, foot by 60 foot modular classroom in place of the western side of the existing basketball court. Um, the classroom building will occupy half of the basketball court. There are no erosion and sediment control plans proposed due to the fact that the land is flat and the classroom construction will be entirely within the basketball core area and they will most likely be installing a new mounted electrical transformer as well i move any, well any discussion any i guess <laughs> yeah i mean there's no digging yeah. nothing I move we approve uh, XIW number 634 117 Post Office Road applications for a wetland permit to construct a modular classroom in place of the existing basketball court at the Stowe Early Learning Center. Donald Nunez, applicant, Town of Enfield, owner, map 54, lot 6, R33 zone. I second. Roll call, please. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley, yes. Carrie Ann Howe. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Marie Pisner. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Six in favor, motion passes. Tell Donna to pull up. M Marie seconded, right? You seconded? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda <clears throat> is IW 635-117 North Street, restore lost wetlands, fill, disturb, and to allow for the development of a contractor storage yard for materials, trucks, and an agricultural cropland. Um, Wellesley Wentworth, applicant representative, Joseph LaCorey, owner, map 93, lot 15, I1 zone. Um, so, we have received some oh. memos and some, uh, some uh, petitions to go to public hearing, so I'm going to ask for a motion to go to public hearing. I move we move this to a public hearing for IW 635. I'll second. Hi, roll call, please. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Carrie Ann Howe. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Marie Pisner. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. yes. Motion passes, so we will have this go to a public hearing. Yep. Hold all your stuff. Can we? Hold all your stuff for yep. next meet, next time we do this. Can we um, request in advance a site visit? Can we do that sure. and visit? What'd you say? Can we request in advance a site visit uh, scheduled? Yes, yes, I can yep. try and set that up. Let's do that. Okay. Would you like to make it a just a wetlands agency site visit or like a public site visit? Um, I would say a wetlands agency would probably, would, uh, whatever you recommend, but I think that seems like it would be more appropriate. Okay. No. So we did receive a couple of memos, which will be read out loud at the um, public hearing. Okay, we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I may, can you give us a, a date that's uh, preferable now? There's a uh, an agreement for us to go on to the property. We just have to call ahead of time. So if you might want to think about a date. Oh, for the site walkthrough? Should we do it? Is Should we do it before or after the, can we do it before the? Public hearing starts. I don't see any reason why you. Yeah, uh, why not? 
I'll take that back. I don't believe you can. I believe you have, you have to, to open wait. the public hearing, hearing and, right. and then yeah. schedule That's what I'm thinking. All right, so, so just if you could think about uh, tentative dates in the future then. Yeah, let's, so let's talk about scheduling yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get to that one. <laughs> um, I can email you guys, like we can start an email list and we mm -hmm. can confer dates. Yeah. Um, just make sure that when you email me back, just say who you are. Because yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of emails. I don't want to miss your email. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, next is number 12, enforcement reports. I don't, none. None. Okay. Report of planning staff. Uh, so November 2nd and November 16th, the meeting dates need to be addressed because that is election month. There's two things um, you can do. For November 2nd, you can choose to meet in the Enfield room or you can do a Wednesday meeting in the council chambers. Um, November 16th will have to be the Enfield room since the council chambers are taken. And if we're in the Enfield room, we will not be recorded live. Why can't we do the 16th? Hmm? What's the she election? The 16th? Election. On the 16th? Yeah, the council chambers is booked all day. Uh, on November 16th? Yeah, that, that's what the calendar said. I believe it's we always day. have it. Yeah, that's what it is. That's my oh, meant. Just oh, it's just swearing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, my okay. terminology is off. I was like, really? We Silly, do? yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, you can do the Enfield room or meet on Wednesday instead. And if you meet on Wednesday, that would get your meeting um, live versus the Enfield room. Up to you. Do we have a, is everybody available on Wednesday the 3rd? I am right. I can be. I am right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that considering everything we've got going on lately. <laughs> it might be the best. It, it would be really, really, really good to have it. Yeah. And the 17th, yes, unfortunately, yes. is a POCD steering yeah. meeting. So the 16th, you can meet in the Enfield room, and hopefully things will be a little bit more cleared up by then. Yeah. But I will definitely make sure the recorder is on so top. It's good. Yeah. So the next meeting will be Wednesday, November 3rd? Yes. So we all feel we can make? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's in here? Yes. Yes. It will be a special meeting just because of the date change. That's it. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then this. Now we will have the public hearing mm -hmm. on that day. Okay. And I mean the two of them. The, we yes. Have the continuation the, the continued one. public hearing and the new public hearing. And the 16th, um, just. Enfield room. Enfield room, but are they going to have their meal down there? Their what? Are they going to have a meal? They often oh, yeah. they set up <laughs> meals. Yeah, they always get upset when we have our meetings down there because they try to eat. <laughs> they're not allowed to eat in here. Yeah, they're not allowed to eat. They should eat in the hallway. They're taking our meetings. Um, yeah. <laughs> Isn't there another room? There's a Thompsonville room, but it's very small. Oh, okay. And we're building yeah. another conference room, but it's not ready yet. No. Yeah, I say we just, use, we'll just use the Enfield room. Yeah. 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 Maybe they'll leave us snacks. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll keep the 16th as the 16th. Okay, in the Enfield room? Yep. Um... Let me just verify that real quick, okay? They don't have masks on. Mm -hmm. She's she's verifying the date. Okay. Huh? Um. Yes, those will work. Does it work? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, no, we've, we've had longer than this. Yeah. Yes, we, so, we have. Uh, uh, next um, on our agenda is new applications to be received. We have IW 636-59 Cottage Road, application for a wetland permit to replace the seawall. David Besky, owner applicant. I didn't say that right. I'm sorry. Beesh, owner applicant, Matt Beatty, lot 80, R33. And then we do have another one that was, uh, they just got today, and I'll let Georgie, it's um, IW 633. So we received it yesterday, um, right before we closed. <laughs> um, Inland Wetlands application number 633 for 190 Elm Street. Application for a wetlands permit for the development of an 8,437 square foot gas station and convenience store with a drive through and a separate 3,197 square foot car wash associated with parking and wetland mitigation measures. Luke Morrow and Kevin Soley, applicant representatives. Mike Frisbee, applicant. Douglas Fournier, owner, BG Zone. And I forgot to put the map and lot number, so I apologize. Okay. 
That's fine. Excellent. So we have two applications to receive. Okay. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Wait, wait, wait. Aye. Aye. Time. Okay. Time. 839. Thank you.